Hello there everybody, it's Sublot and I 2 AK Nightmare, and welcome back to Rose Guns Day Season 2. Now then, on the last episode, I kinda pulled a little cliffhanger again, but hey, what do you expect? That seems to be my, my, my specialty at this point. Looks like now we're getting ready to begin the, uh, supposedly failed operation considering Amanda has changed location. So this kind of, uh, puts a, oh, this kinda changes things considering... Oh dear. A man is not going to be a Primavera. That only tells me that this is not going to go well. Tell Cyrus and the captain that our guest has checked in. Uh, sure! Oh boy. I am a little scared. 6.31 p.m. Cyrus's group was contacted about Caleb's arrival. Caleb showed up at the hotel! You're up, Meryl! I'm calling them now! Hold on a sec! There are seven bodyguards in the store today. Good thing that's one less than usual. Uh, hello? Uh, it's final time. We're starting the operation. What's Amanda doing? Is she in her room? If she's holed up in her room, this should be easy. Please! Just this one day, don't have a bunch of bodyguards protecting her? They say she's alone in her room, but there are two bodyguards by the door. Oh. That's within our calculations. We're counting on all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, the time to fight has come. The fight for our children's future. Yeah! Let's start cooking! It's time to make a legend! All right. Uh. Are you ready, everyone? Yeah. Standard's group is already on its way here. We've got to grab Amanda right before they arrive. <clears throat> Iris and I will grab her. Everyone, do as we planned. You got that? If you get scared and screw up, that'll just make this even more dangerous. If you don't want to die, you'd better be bold and follow through till it's over. Got it? <clears throat> that was the weirdest voice I think I've ever done. 6.34 p.m. The female employees of Club Primavera began to carry out the plan. Hey there, girls. Still smelling lovely, I see. If we didn't, all the customers would run away, wouldn't they? Oh, you think? Uh. Oh, you think so? Can't say I, sm I mind a smelly one myself, though. <laughs> Got some business with the madam? Yeah, just a little personal matter. Hold on a sec. I'll let her know. Uh, madam, there are two women here saying they want to speak with you. Certainly. Well, she says you can go in. We'll have to do a body check first, though. Get it over with, then. Perverts. <laughs> now that's what this is what I'm best at. Hey, you're a sicko, aren't you? Huh. What might this be about? And two of you at once. Uh, um, Amanda Son, actually. It was as though they were trying to broach a difficult subject. The two women's eyes started to doubt about suspiciously. It looked like they merely had something important to discuss, but Amanda's instincts told her that the day had finally come. The women's hands darted into the curtains and behind a dresser and came out holding concealed guns. At the same time, in the same speed, Amanda pulled out a personal defense pistol. Gun barrels were pointed at each other. Time froze. With faces so tense that it looked like they might crack, the women pointed quivering gun barrels at Amanda. Oh, she's even got a little sprite for it, too. What do you think you're doing? Th throw away your gun! And if I refuse? Quiet! No talking! Th the moment you try to call for help, we'll shoot! <laughs> Maybe you should talk a little more softly. The guards outside will hear you. Please throw away your, your gun away, Man Amanda's on! 
The iris! Take your gun! Uh, hmm. Very well then, but I'll want it back later. I'm rather fond of that one. I find it interesting that she's actually got herself like a gun sprite. Like, this kind of tells me that she might actually fight at some point. Or did they literally just make a sprite specifically just for this one moment? One of the women grabbed Amanda's gun. They were making the biggest gamble of their lives. Not only that, but their opponent was the most feared lady of the evening in C23. Okay, this, okay. I thought that, that she was going to actually be at the uh, hotel. Not, okay. I, okay, my bad. There were beads of sweat on their faces, and the fingers, elbows, and knees appeared to be quivering. They were so tense, in fact, that Amanda began to grow amused. It looks like you've really screwed up your courage. Very nicely done, you two. J shut up! Please, stop talking! Her voice reached the ears of the bodyguards in the hallway. They couldn't hear clearly, but they could tell that someone was yelling in a less than friendly situation. Just to be safe, one of the bodyguards put his hand on the doorknob to check inside. Don't move! Two women, who had slipped out of the shadows like cats, pressed their handguns against the backs of the two bodyguards' heads. The same thing was happening all around the club at that very instant. Damn! The bodyguards, who were drunk and talking happily just like usual, were struck dumb. After all, the women who had been smiling brightly and drinking with them had all pulled out guns at once and pressed the cold barrels against their foreheads. What do you think you're doing, ladies? Don't talk! I'll really shoot! Put your hands up! We're serious here, okay? Hey, enough of that! <laughs> Your hands are shaking. Guns aren't toys, you know. You'd better stop before you hurt yourselves. <laughs> the bodyguards, who knew there was nothing as dangerous as an amateur with a gun, let themselves be held up. However, several former punks started to fly into a rage. Okay, pull that trigger if you think you can. What's wrong with you? I'll shoot. I really will. Who, who, who do you think you are? <laughs> the instant one of the men hit a woman's arm, <clears throat> trying to steal a gun, Cyrus's group poured into the club. Sup, bitches? All right, you bastards! Stop moving and get down on the floor! It's Primavera! Bastards! Seriously? You're gonna try that shit with me? My god. Ooh, I do believe it's my turn to shine. What the hell kind of gun is she using? Looks like a sub looks like a miniature machine gun. And she's got one of those guns. That I see way too much. Yeah, circular barrel one thingies. That's what I'm calling them. Don't make me say it again! If you don't want to be turned into a honeycomb, get down on the floor! Come on, let's get going. On the floor, on the floor. Overpowered by this momentum, the bodyguards all surrendered and got down on the floor. Is everyone all right? No one is hurt? We're fine, Richardson. You all did splendidly. Nice going. And thanks for hanging in there until today. Today's the day Primavera comes back to life. What about Amanda? She shut up in her room. Uh, quickly! At that moment, two or three gunshots rang out and a woman screamed. What happened? Did someone get shot? Sorry, Stella. Uh, one of the bodyguards got away. You didn't get shot. He only hit you. Oh, good job hanging in there. It is necessary that Caleb be informed about the club's capture. That man's escape creates no problems. Okay, boys. Time to go to the special room for the after party. One at a time! Stand up slowly! Hands on your heads! Even though the guns were the same, the pressure generated by the person holding it was completely different. Demon Sergeant Cyrus's presence completely overwhelmed the bodyguards, and they meekly followed his orders. Probably the smartest decision, really. <laughs> Greetings, Amanda. It has been some time. Could you please switch these two guards with someone else? They're so tense, it looks like they might faint at any moment. 
The two women who were pointing guns at Amanda in this once-in-a-lifetime battle were sweating as if they'd had buckets poured over them. <laughs> well done, you two. This is all thanks to your efforts. Richardson! Uh, Iris! Hang in there! As though Richard's words had cut the cord's attention, one of the women fainted and slumped to the ground. Hmm. Well, I didn't see that coming. Amanda, forgive me, but we're going to restrain you too. Though I'd rather let, I would rather let you slide with house, house arrest. Please forgive me. After all, you're the one who always prepares for the worst case scenario. <laughs> Stella, if you would. I've got some lovely bracelets, just your size. I'll bet you've never worn these. Please, you think I wouldn't have worn handcuffs once or twice in this trade? <laughs> I mean... I guess... 6.50pm. Cyrus's group took control of Club Primavera. <clears throat> Their target, Madame Amanda, was restrained. Except for one who escaped. All the bodyguards were restrained and thrown into the shed. Something kind of tells me that right after the guy, you know, uh, reports what happened, he's probably going to get killed by Miguel for running away. At least that's kind of what I'm, you know, <clears throat> that's what I'm going to infer. A few guns have been fired, <clears throat> but practically speaking, the raid had achieved full marks. Everything happened inside the soundproofed club, so none of the passerbys even realized that something was going on. The bodyguard who escaped would probably try to report to Caleb. However, it would surely take him some time to contact his boss, who, when even Caleb's best underlings didn't know where he was staying. During that gap in time, Primavera would have to be fortified. Okay, just move to Sackley Plan. We're making a barricade out of chairs and desks. You'll trip in high heels. Uh, change your shoes. <clears throat> Block that spot with her sofa. Everyone together now. Don't worry about breaking it. We can put our remodel down as a business expense anyway. <laughs> Hello, is that Rose? <laughs> we were successful here. No one was injured badly enough to worry about. Oh, thank goodness. And Amanda's on? Yes, Rose. Amanda-san, I apologize for putting you in such a constrictive situation. Don't worry about it. This is a madam's job, isn't it? Yes. Amanda-san, thanks so much for what you've done. I told you on the first day you became the madam, but <clears throat> I'll say it again. Being the madam isn't about cheap talk. It's a tough job, and you've got to take initiative before everyone else and bear the brunt alone. You can't be afraid of being hurt. You have to take pride in being hurt in someone else's place. Y yes. By now, I understand that well. So, now, have I finally made up for forcing the job of madam on you? Y yes. Amanda-san, I truly want to thank you for everything. Ah. The attack on Caleb would begin once enough enemy reinforcements had been drawn to Primavera. Rose's group would have to hold in their impatience for just a little longer. The time for Rose and Caleb's showdown was quickly approaching. Uh... <laughs> I do believe that is the case. 6.51 p.m. Also jamming it out with that heavy rock music, my man. The bodyguard who had escaped from Primavera used a phone in a nearby bar to report the attack to his superior, the Capo Fritz Furuta. Capo Fritz Fu... The fuck kind of name is that? This man, who was in charge of the surrounding turf, decided to take quick action before things got worse. <clears throat> Don't let him have Primavera! <clears throat> that club's a symbol for those guys. And no matter what, make sure you rescue Madame Amanda. Nothing else matters. I don't care if y'all get turned to mincemeat. They may have cover, but there's only a few of them. Take them all out at once. But, boss, should we contact the father? I wanted to clean this up ourselves first. But if something happens to the madam, 
I'm headed straight for Tokyo Bay. Anyway, contact him. This isn't something we can handle. 7-11 p.m. Ooh, may as well just stop by the 7-11. Fritz and those under his command... Oh, his name was, was literally... Oh, his li his name was literally Fritz. I feel... Ugh. Under his command, Rush to Primavera. They attempted to split into two groups and strike from the front and rear of the club at once. Sup, bitches! Hey, our customers are here! Okay, here we go. Time to welcome our first customers to the new and improved Primavera. Welcome to Primavera, bitches! Get down! Damn them, firing all of a sudden like that! They've set up a barricade! They're getting ready to fight the last man, aren't they? Those who tried to sneak in through the back door received a <laughs> similar welcome. Dear valued customers, this is the back door. Please go around and enter through the front. They're here again! Yeah! Jeez! Ah, oh, shit, it's no use! Look for another way in! What are you doing? There's only a few of them, right? What are you all standing around for? Boss, it's no use! They're planning to hold this place until the end! Both the front and back enders are barricaded! And they've even got those women using guns! Looks like they've got plenty of weaponry packed in there, too. It's a fortress! <laughs> Primavera's trying to take back their lost ground. Or should you call this taking the fight to their home turf? This is bad, boss. We can't do anything here alone. Th damn it! Anyway, don't break the siege on the club. Make sure this becomes their grave. Don't let them get away! Fritz called off the attack. He tried to contact Caleb again, <clears throat> though they still didn't know how to reach him. He also got in touch with all the neighboring bosses who he could contact directly. His forces grew even more. 7.16 p.m. The phone in the Primavera office rang. <clears throat> oh, the phone seems to be ringing. Hmm. Richard slowly rose to his feet. There was a chance that Caleb was at the other end of the line. Richard readied himself once more and picked up the receiver. Hello. This is Club Primavera. I'm Fritz Furuda, a capo from the family. Is Madame Amanda safe? I'll let you hear her speak. Hello, Fritz. Uh, forgive me, and I even promised to let you put your head in my lap today. We're temporarily closed for business today. Another time, perhaps. Don't lay a finger on the madam. Just you try and kill her and I'll blow everyone in that club to bits. So, what are your demands? That Father Caleb retire. You bastard! Are you really planning to start a war with us? Are you suggesting that we haven't been at war before now? Madam Rose will rule City 23. Caleb cannot build a future for his countrymen. Father Caleb's retirement and the dissolution of the Caleb family. Please understand that we have no intention of conceding either point. You'll regret this. I'll cut your little sister to pieces right in front of your eyes. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. I always thought of a mafia as a fairly intelligent group, trained to perfection by countless struggles. Such a disappointment to find I was wrong. What? What did you say? <laughs> it seems that to you, a war is little more than a turf struggle between bullies. If it's for the future of our children. We are willing to burn ourselves up, give up all we have, and fight to the end in order to pave the way forward. If the alternative is surrendering to fear for our own lives and forcing eternal suffering onto our descendants, then we would throw our la lives away right now for the sake of our children. Bastard. We will show no mercy. We will defeat any foe who stands in our way without mercy. Damn, Richard! My determination to step into a war is nothing like yours. 
this is the war I believe in. Hm. Damn! <laughs> oh my god, that was so cool! Good job, Richard. 7.19 p.m. News of the situation finally reached Miguel. Oh, this theme's playing. I actually... Oh, God. I think some... I, I forgot what the name of the song was. I really like it. Miguel reported to Caleb. When he heard that Amanda had been taken hostage, Caleb flew into a rage like a lion. Bring it on, Rose! So you finally struck! Gather the troops and contact James. Tell all the bosses in the area to head there, too. Amanda's my woman. You've got guts, Rose, to go after her. Jeez, I'm not used to having the Oishi voice be this demented. <laughs> Miguel, call through Navira. Let me talk to Rose. Calm down! We'll definitely rescue Madame Manda, so leave it to us. If you call them, they'll only say something unpleasant to provoke you. Leave this to me and go cool your head for a bit. Like I could, fool! But Miguel San the intrusion. You can't get in touch with James? Why is Glasses never around when you need him? James is already on Primavera's side. <laughs> there was no way he would answer to their call. Because of his long experience of office work, he had been left in charge of the Caleb family's communication network. Because of that, his alienation resulted in a fatal delay in the Caleb family's first actions. No matter what Primavera is planning, the more time we give them, the worse things will get! I don't care how many people we lose. Gather the troops and have them all strike Primavera at once. We'll recapture the club within an hour. Tell them that if we can't, I'll cut off all the boss's ears. Oh fucking hell, man. Miguel was fully aware of Caleb's strong points and weak points. Because he was such a courageous general, his temper was too short. He was too willing to pick a fight. As long as Caleb kept his cool, he was able to hold this urge in check, but... In times like this, Miguel had to stay cool and supportive. Well, good job on you, Miguel. This was probably a strategy to lure Caleb out of hiding. They were probably sure that taking Amanda hostage would lure Caleb out, with that short temper of his. In other words, they had a reason to be sure of their success if Caleb was lured out. In that case, he must not let Caleb go to Primavera. Even Rose must know that the family wasn't perfectly unified at the moment. That earlier failed assassination attempt was proof. The enemy knew that defeating Caleb alone could easily make the family crumble. However, on the other hand, Miguel's instincts were setting off alarm bells in his head. Was this plan really so simplistic as to involve nothing but provoking Caleb and drawing him out? With a little more time, he might be able to figure it out. At any rate, the only countermeasure they could take now was very simple. Stop Caleb from going to Primavera. However, the constant strain had weakened Caleb far more than it appeared. He probably wouldn't be able to stay calm for long. <clears throat> Definitely not! Miguel had no way of stopping Caleb when he got this reckless. Unless they received news of Amanda's rescue within one hour, Caleb would probably decide to take a trip to the front lines. Definitely! 7.30 p.m. Group by group, the elite soldiers of the Caleb family gathered around Club Primavera. The group that had already attacked the club was explaining the situation. Fritz! Whoa! Look at this guy! Why does he have like a similar look to Okanogi? Fritz, damn it, you coward! Giving them this much time! This is why everyone says you Navy boys aren't worth a shit! We'll go wipe your asses for you! Then why don't you try charging in? Army bastards ain't changed at all since the Battle of Port Arthur! There's only two ways in, front and back. Both are fully equipped with barricades and machine guns and rifles. All other ways in are cut off. Good, that's enough. Leave the rest to the army. Men, it's time to show them what a foot soldier's fighting spirit is all about. Have them draw up the layout of the club. The number of people and weapons. Not a man's location. The best men from the front lines began taking heavy equipment, ammunition, grenades, and explosives out from the cars. Without a doubt, this was war. We got permission from Miguel to use all weapons. And he says he'll cut our ears off if we don't finish in under an hour. You're kidding me! Okay, we'll help out, so tell us the plan. I actually personally like my ears. We'll sync our clocks, and the army will launch a faint attack on the front and back simultaneously. I just like, I think I just weirdly combined, uh, freaking Alfred's voice with, uh, 
Just a random goon. The Navy will provide cover for the military engineers. We'll blow up the bear. We'll blow up the bear on the employee side and try to push our way in through that. Blow up? Inside the club is one thing, but can we really use bombs outside? If it's just one, they'll think it's a traffic accident or something. Tokyo's famous for its truck accidents, isn't it? Is it? That kind of worries me. Oh boy. The employee side entrance had been completely sealed, so they had already given up on trying to break in through there. Thanks to Rose not winning a gunfight to break outside the club, they could use this strategy to gather the enemy's attention at the two main entrances and take the fight inside. Of course, Cyrus had anticipated that the enemy might break through at an unexpected location. However, he was expecting that the police would round them all up before then. They've got to be enforcements! A whole lot of them! Everybody's dropping by to play! Look at all her precious elites from the front lines! As he sneaked in a few glances outside, Cyrus grinned. Their prompt movements told him that they were elites back in the war. Don't you think we've drawn enough of the enemy's forces? It's time. We should get the captain to send the police. How much more time do we have to buy? Five minutes, ten minutes. Listen up, everyone. It's a bit longer. The police are going to come and round them all up. Then we can have a refurbishment party with Captain Butler and the others. Oh, hell yeah. Well, hello there. Looks like they're bringing out the big guns. Major Mononobe's here. If he's their commander, we're in trouble. Richard, contact the captain on the double. Time is of the essence. Understood. Hey, I've been waiting for you, Richard. The police are all ready to go. We seem to be surrounded by elite troops back from the front lines. They'll probably attack very soon. Got it. Nice going, Japanese army. The US army will handle the rest. Lieutenant, begin cutting off the main road. Give the police the go sign. I just gave the order. Both groups will reach their destination within 10 minutes. Okay. Yes, yeah. <sighs> Sounds like it's proceeding well. Uh, that's great. Just now, the captain gave orders for the police to move in and from the, for the roadway to be blocked. We should be finished here in 10 minutes. After that, Caleb will be right on the chopping board. Wayne, Rose, check your guns one last time. It's almost our turn to move. Rosan, I'll lead the way, so make sure you stay behind me. Got that? Yeah, I understand. We're a team, after all. Caleb, tonight it's all on me. Let's enjoy ourselves. Oh boy. A woman looking out a window suddenly started yelling. Apparently, the enemy had finally started to move. They're moving! They're splitting into two groups! I'll bet they're trying to attack the front and back at once! Did y'all hear that? This is the enemy's final strike. If you stay calm and keep shooting, they won't be able to break in here. Don't panic and empty your magazines at once. Make sure you support your mates by shooting while they reload. The police have already been mobilized. Show me your courage just one more time for a few more minutes. Got it? There's quite a lot of them out there, isn't there? Indeed. It seems Caleb hasn't hesitated to throw in his very best men. It must be a sign of how important you are to him. Not quite. I'm sure he's thoroughly lost his cool by now. Miguel is probably managing to calm him somehow. But soon, he'll probably lose patience and come here himself. It doesn't matter. Our plan is to draw the enemy forces here and make use of their absence. I see. Rose is there now, isn't she? Richard. Have the girls quietly back away from the barricade and take refuge on the stage in the main hall. The leader's probably Major Maurice Mononobe, one of the best from the front lines, and a man even Caleb would take his hat off to. He'll probably break through this barricade by force. I'm sure he'll use bombs or something similar. You won't be able to block it. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Amanda? If you move me to a chair in the main hall and show off your hostage, we should be able to buy enough time for the police to reach this place. She is literally trying to help us. Major, we're in place. The front group, the back group, and the engineer group are ready. Okay, you maggots. Keep an eye on your watches. 
We start the attack at 1945 hours. We break in at 1947 hours. Don't let them use the madam as a bargaining chip to negotiate. They can't afford to kill her. War has no rules. Shoot to kill, take no prisoners. Kill, kill, kill! Repeat it. War has no rules. Shoot the kill. Take no prisoners. Kill, kill, kill. Jesus. Caleb's elite scattered. Then they surrounded Primavera, took their initial positions, and waited for the time of the attack. Just a little longer. Until 7.45 p.m., the time of the attack. The phone in the madam's office rang. However, since Richard had left his seat, only Amanda and a woman guarding her were there. Of course, with her hands cuffed, Amanda couldn't pick up the receiver, and the guard didn't know whether she should answer or not. You, pick up the receiver. Huh? Oh, right. Hello? Huh? Oh, ca Captain Butler. What would she be doing? Oh, um. Pass me the receiver, quickly. Cowed by Amanda, the woman held the phone against the other's ear. Hello, Captain. Such a noisy night it's been. Where's Richard? What about Cyrus? Tell them it's an emergency. The cavalry is going to be showing up late. What did you say? The local station chief mixed up the incidents. A short while ago, an armed robbery took place in this jurisdiction, and he mistook that for tonight's operation. Shit! As the bank's alarm bells rang, a group of men dressed as classic burglars with handkerchiefs over their mouths flew out of the building. They were all carrying sacks of money and seemed unable to hold in their laughter at their huge success. <laughs> Fucking Alfred? <laughs> I thought you were supposed to... <laughs> How? Uh -oh. Tonight marks the start of a new day for me. We did it, boss! The pack full of bills! And here I thought the police would get in faster than those slugs. Mafias are just too troublesome, so I'm moving on to better things. From this night forward, we are... The Crazy Alfred Armed Robbery Family! <laughs> oh my god! Fucking hell, Alfred! He just had to show up at the worst fucking time! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> okay. Okay. That night, a huge crime would supposedly occur within State 23, so the police force was supposed to be mobilized according to the MP's orders. <laughs> the station chief had mistakenly <laughs> assumed that this robbery of Alfred's was this, what this was all about. In the first place, MPs and the police sometimes have jurisdictions that overlap, so they aren't on the best of terms. Partly because of that, they had failed to achieve a mutual understanding. It was a painful mess up for Butler. Calm down, Captain. How long until the police reach Primavera? I'm having them hurry back there right now. Damn it! Why is it always me who. How many minutes, Captain? D Twi. No. At 15 minutes. Richard! Cyrus! <clears throat> oh dear. Yeah, yeah. I understand, Captain. But please get them there as fast as you can. Are you kidding me? If they're ten minutes late, that could be fatal for Primavera. I understand your impatience. Forget that feeling for now. We have our own job. But... They have Cyrus there. He can buy them ten minutes even against pros. Trust your allies. The phone rang again. This time it was from their man in the hotel. Huh? Caleb's on did? A car? What is it, Rose? He says Caleb's on had a car brought to the back of the hotel. It sounds like he's planning to leave. Is the bastard going to the front lines himself? Or he could be playing to change hideouts. By the way, if he leaves the hotel, our arrangements for our little date will be ruined. Since we want to minimize casualties, we can't confront them outside. We have to confront them now. Oh, everything that could have gone wrong did. Enough of your whining. This is a war between me and Rose. How can you fall into, into such an obvious trap? Are you trying to throw away your life? I'll fight anyone who picks a fight with me. I've never run away. 
Who cares if it's a trap? If they think they can kill me, I'd like to see them try. The guards have been chased out of the room. The only ones inside were Caleb, who was furiously trying to make a raid on Primavera, and Miguel, who was trying desperately to console him. That's enough out of you, Miguel! Out of the way! <laughs> Caleb's thick arm easily grabbed Miguel by the collar and threw him against the wall. The angle must have been bad since Miguel slammed his head and curled up into a ball moaning. Apparently even Caleb realized he had gone too far and his fury subsided for a moment. Miguel suddenly stood up and walked determinedly toward Caleb. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit you so hard. Before he even finished speaking, Miguel slapped him on the face. Ow! Ow! What the? Hey, stop! Unable to bear it, bear it, Caleb shrank back and covered his face, but Miguel kept slapping him over and over. For a while, the sound of slapping rang out through the room. Eventually, the slapping stopped and Caleb cautiously lowered his arms from his face. When he did, he saw Miguel hanging his head and shaking, tears pouring from his eyes. M Miguel. Stupid Caleb! Stupid, stupid! You liar! You big liar! I, I won't argue with you about stupid, but how can you call me a liar? No, you really are a big stupid liar. Liar! You want to die, don't you? You want a place to die, don't you? That's why you're happily going out, hoping to die by looking cool, right? Don't think I don't know. But you know what? It's a club for ladies of the evening where you want to die. Are you satisfied with that? Is that really good enough for your death? Really? You promised, didn't you? Didn't you? And I was so happy. So happy. Stupid Caleb, I can't stand you anymore. Just go and die alone. As Miguel turned and tried to leave, his body was held by two thick arms. <laughs> go, stupid. Go by yourself. Go on. Go on. Jeez. Miguel, forgive me. Well, that's right. I did promise you. I got too fired up. I'm sorry. Please, forgive me. Are you really sorry? Do you admit you were wrong? If you really do, then sit down on the floor. Okay. I understand. Caleb's massive body meekly sat itself down in the Siza position, or er, Siza, in front of Miguel's relatively slender form. It was like a scene out of a fairy tale, like a young girl taming a massive demon. Listen up, Caleb. Primavera is no place for you to die. Yeah. That's right. That's no place for you and me to die. We're going to teach the occupying forces a lesson. Then, we're going to toss out all the money and slit open their chests, right? What gives you the right to die before you've done that? You're free to abandon your war if you want to. However, my war can only ever be ended as part of your war. You're my only superior officer. I'll never forgive you if you give up the fight before ending my war. God. Uh, that's right. It's just as you say. Forgive me. Way too much has happened lately. Your heart's just a bit weakened now. You aren't calm at the moment. A way to die easily has suddenly appeared. <clears throat> it was almost enough to make you lose hope. Anyway, just do what I tell you to. Got it? That's... Yes, sir! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I get it. <laughs> Guess I'm no match for you. Oh, my God. I think I got a little bit too into character there for a moment. 
I apologize if that sounded cringy. I just kind of got in like the zone. Sorry. Got it? This is all the trap that Rose and the others set up. We mustn't dance to their tune. Maurice's group will surely save Amanda. So just hang in there for now. <laughs> True enough. But Maurice, there's no doubt about it, is there? Also, don't you think it's unmanly for a warrior to die in a place filled with women? Primavera isn't our place to die. And we won't be dying today, either. Anyway, just leave things to me today. <clears throat> Miguel walked down to the hallway, Caleb behind him. Several bodyguards greeted them with uneasy looks on their faces. Did you get this car started? Y yes boss. What are you planning? We'll leave this place and move to a different hideout. I, I just had a bad feeling all day. No, a bad feeling about this place. Miguel pushed Caleb into the elevator and the guards all got in too. Even the guards who were normally stationed in this spot around the clock. Okay, that was a really... Okay, I, I really got a little bit... I got, I got way too into character there. That was a very... That was a very powerful moment with Miguel and Caleb. And for some reason, I, it's making me wit. I don't want them to die. That's the thing. Like, okay, obviously Miguel is a villain, but he's not a one-dimensional villain. It's the same thing with Caleb. They're, they've got their quirks. You understand how they turned out the way they did. That's how you write a good villain. And it almost feels like he's really not even a villain sometimes. Like... Just... damn. Let's give up on Tokyo for the time being. We'll cross the river and escape to Ichikawa. You're telling me to go lick Satomi's shoes? He wants City 2023 20, too. Of the three nations we've got to choose from, better to lick a Japanese person's shoes. <laughs> That's enough to make you cry. So it's so bad now I'm not even free to die. No you aren't! For now, stay quiet and do as I say. As the elevator door opened and they walked down to the lobby, Caleb suddenly tapped Miguel on the shoulder. Huh? What is it? Looks like they would never were planning to invite me over to play. Get back. I have guests. Huh? His head must have been filled with thoughts about Caleb. To think that someone as sensitive as Miguel would fail to notice them walking straight towards them from across the lobby. Rose Hayabara and Caleb Kereji. The time had come for the two people fighting for the throne of City 23's underworld to face off. Rose had Leo and Wayne behind her, while Caleb had Miguel and his guards behind him. They slowly walked towards each other. Then, with a suitable gap between them, they stopped and faced each other. If this were the era of swords, they sh would surely have stood about two meters apart. However, in the era of guns, the gap had grown to 20 meters. Even so, for these people fighting for the throne of the underworld, it was certainly close enough. Hey Rose, long time no see. How have you been doing? How about you? Well, you know, I'm already at this age. Amanda San is safe. I see. Thank you. Don't tell me you came here just to say that. No, yeah, kind of, sure. Let's, let's go have fun. We share the bond of having declared war on each other. That's right. We are in a war. Why do we have to fight? Both of us are after the same thing, aren't we? No. Our methods are different. Your methods are misguided. Because of them, many of our countrymen have suffered. I wanted to save our countrymen as quickly as possible. You were too hasty. So you weren't able to save anyone. Hmm. So? Are you saying you can do something about it? I am. 
My methods will save and guide our countrymen. <laughs> A good answer. So, what will you do? I'll take control of the City 23 Underworld. Oh? I'll bear the brunt to protect our countrymen, so I can show that I'm prepared to get my hands dirty for the sake of our countrymen. You realize that the Underworld's filled with nothing but snakes, right? Even the people helping you, like Butler and Maze, you are all bastards. All of them think of nothing but themselves! They're only helping you for now because it helps further their own aims. That's what they're all like. If only you could- if only you really could protect our countrymen by sucking up the people like Butler and Meiju. True. I understand. The Captain and Meiju son are taking my side because it's convenient for their respective camps. I- 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 I'm aware of this too. I'm not- I'm not gonna give myself a false sense of security just because I've got them on my side now. Did you think a lady of the evening like me would fail to notice that? The occupying forces were spurring on Rose's group to make everyone forget about the large sum of money they received from Caleb. Chinatown was plotting to strengthen its influence in State 23 by nominating Rose as its new ruler after Caleb. <clears throat> Watch this. Suddenly we suddenly recruit Alfred to the team. <laughs> That'd be so fucking weird. I don't know. Rose understood all of this. The world of Ladies of the Evening is filled with people plotting, gossiping, and acting friendly when the person in question is nearby. A world filled with snakes is only natural. Did you really think that I, someone who is, after all, the madam, wouldn't know that? You've gotten tough, Rose. The times changed the moment the war ended. In the next era, Japan will have to live in the gap between America and China, trying to get along with both sides. If we stand in opposition to both sides, or even if we try to curry favor with just one side, we'll eventually be crushed. Just like you. And you think you can protect Japan? Protect your homeland for your countrymen while wedged between those two sides? I will do it. And you think you have the aptitude to do it? I don't know. No, I don't have the arrogance to claim that I do. But now I have to do it. When someone more talented than me appears, I'll pass on the title of Madam to them. So in the same way, I want you to step down from your position and hand it over to me. Are you telling me to retire? That's right. <laughs> <sighs> Doesn't sound so bad. I reckon I've been feeling worn out enough lately. It'd be nice to push everything onto you and retire. In that case, I'd better give you a farewell present. Son? The criminal underworld's a world of men. You can't just hand the crown over to someone else like a king. You need a legend of how you took the top seat in this town in my place. Isn't that it, Leo? Leo and Wayne, who had been staying behind Rose, stepped in front of her. At the same time, Miguel and the guard stepped in front of Caleb. I want to entrust this city to my boss. Your eyes say that Rose is more fitting for that job than I am. Hmm. That's right. Why? Let's hear what you have to say. Because we're soldiers. We can fight according to someone else's orders. But we can't recreate a cause worth fighting for. Are you saying I've been overambitious trying to surpass my limits? That's right. So now... You can relax. <clears throat> Damn. <laughs> Caleb, get to the elevator while we stole them. Barricade yourself in the suite floor and buy time until we can call for reinforcements. Since they had bumped into each other in the lobby, Miguel guessed that they had support waiting behind the hotel. If so, they may be stuck in a dead end. But going back to the suite floor and holding up until support came was their best option. I'll do that. It's not right for a king to throw away his throne and stagger around. Caleb-san, is it really necessary for us to fight? <sighs> I told you, 
this is a potting gift. Instead of the Battle of Okihazama, this will be the surprise attack of Belton Plaza Hotel. A new legend of how Madame Rose personally defeated the tyrant Father Caleb, and took to and took the throne of the underworld for herself. If you take that legend as a crown, then even the opportunists among the boss will know who their new king is. If Caleb resigned easily, it would probably cause uprisings among the powerful bosses over who would become his successor. Oh. Actually, huh. Caleb does make a pretty fair point, actually. I mean, he's right. I mean, just handing it over would not make a really good legend at all, now would it? Huh. However, if there were a proper ceremony to mark the transfer of kingship, those bosses wouldn't be able to complain. In the criminal underworld, a change of kings would never end except with the scent of blood and gun smoke. We're coming, Caleb. Be my guest, Leo Shishigami. Caleb, run to the elevator at my signal. Like we let you get away. You owe us too much that you haven't paid back. Hey there, Wayne. I didn't realize you were even here. All the other actors were just so much more impressive. Bastard. I understand, Caleb, son. That's what I came here prepared to do. Perfect. That's a good expression you've got on your face. Just like my dead wife. I think it's because... It's, I, I basically... It's... It's kind I, I'm not entirely sure... I feel like I should take that sort of as a compliment for Caleb, I think. I mean... Maybe? The elevator which had been summoned by one of the guards pushing the button without turning around slowly approached first floor. The display showing its progress looked like an hourglass, or maybe a fuse. But Leo's group and Miguel's group sweat on their foreheads and tried to measure the proper amount moment to pull out their weapons. Though swords have been replaced by guns, the careful way of measuring distance remained unchanged in duels between men. Slowly, slowly, the elevator approached. What? What's going on? An explosion rang out and Primavera shook. Dust fell from the ceiling. Meryl, let's give up this place and retreat to the main hall. Huh? Wait, why? The enemy's getting in, aren't they? Just do what I tell you and go! The employee side door that the enemy had blown up was near the rear entrance. So Stella, who was guarding the back door, understood what was going on. <coughs> what happened? The side door has been blown open. Let's abandon this spot and retreat to the main hall. Quickly! Cyrus had already anticipated this turn of events and had given orders to retreat to the main hall immediately if something happened. The side door, which was now billowing smoke, had once been sealed with pieces of wood, but the explosion had knocked it down. When Stella saw enemies through the smoke, trying to sneak in, she yelled even louder. They're inside! Everyone return to the main hall now! Quickly! All right, you opened a hole in her guts. Get this stuff out of the way. Don't panic. We prepared for this. We're moving to the second stage of the plan. Come on, everyone to your posts. Hey, when will the police get here? Aren't they here yet? It's nothing new for our customers to show up late, right? Listen up, okay? This is the crucial moment. Everyone, if you don't want to die, fight. Amanda. We're counting on your legendary acting skills. I'm glad to hear it. Who would have guessed that I'd spend my last day as madam acting on a stage? However, I'm not confident my little play will work on Maurice. Okay, undercover, undercover. Don't stick your heads out. Just like I keep telling you. Don't worry about hitting anyone. Just keep firing in the enemy's general direction. That'll be enough to buy us time. Do that and you'll also be safe. Primavera's forces hit off to the side, sides of the stage of the main hall, preparing to shoot at anyone who came in. Only Richard and Amanda, the former pointing a gun at the latter, were waiting for them in the center of the stage. Just as Amanda had said, it looked like a scene from the middle of a play. Come to think of it, ad-libbing wasn't your strong point, was it? 
and now I have to keep it up for more than 10 minutes. Pardon me, but could someone get me a one clue, a cue card? Our race is a ruthless man. If we find out that negotiations aren't gonna work, run off to the side of the stage as quick as you can. We'll cover you. Things would quickly erupt into a flurry of action. The enemies pouring into the front, back, and side entrances advanced cautiously, on the lookout for surprises. Then, they saw that Primavera's forces were camped out on the stage in the main hall, and they moved to their positions cautiously under cover. So, they're finally showing themselves! Maurice Mononobe! Cyrus Saimura, is it? Didn't want to have to go up against you. Maurice saw. Welcome to Primavera. Mori, stop! Which is really going to shoot me? I believe the father ordered you to see that she didn't get hurt, correct? But please, listen to him. Stop that! You're hurting me! He wasn't actually doing anything that would hurt her. Richard couldn't help but be impressed at Amanda's passionate performance. Something that's lost that I cannot do. Maurice, you know it's about over for you all anyway. Caleb made too many enemies! Maybe. Now I thought I'd find myself pushed into the middle of another world war. If you just put down your gun, it should be possible for us to offer you an attractive proposition. Please, Maurice. Listen to him. I don't want to be killed. What a shameless act. It's obvious you're trying to buy time. It was hard to tell if it was before or after he finished speaking. Maurice pulled the trigger without hesitation. A bright red splash shot into the air and Amanda curled up, groaning. What the f- Everyone shoot! Give them cover! Richard! Amanda! This way, quickly! Uh, are you alright, Amanda? Were you shot on the side? Uh, what an incredible amount of blood! I'd like to think that it just scraped me. I'll be fine. Protect the girls. Such a shame. I never accepted Madame Amanda. Ever since Caleb took her as his woman, he's lost his guts. Women are a plague. You sexist C-word. No one knew if these were his true feelings or whether this was just an act to make it clear that hostage would take him one work. Either way, Richard Amanda's attempt to buy time failed after only a few dozen seconds. 7.49 p.m. At two locations in City 23, the curtains were drawn on gunfights that would determine the city's future. Oh, fuck. Oh, boy. The elevator reached its destination, and its chime became the signal for the duel to start. Oh, they're going. The men's handguns all spat fire at once, and they all jumped behind cover as though thrown there by an explosion. The sounds of gunfire, breaking glass, and the screams of the lobby attendants filled the room with chaos. A curtain was opening up on the legendary Primavera Belton Plaza Hotel gunfight. That is a mouthful. My turn! Oh, that was a close one. Ryan's man, I need to get a new mouse. Nope, nope. Hell no. Oh, I do believe it's my turn. I think it's my turn now. Just... Bro's gonna get a turn. Oh, fucking hell, Caleb's going in. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do good. I'm gonna do good. I'm gonna do good. Okay, just use the Leo card. Fuck! <laughs> now there's a surprise. When did you learn to shoot, Madam Rose? I was taught directly by Leo Shishigami. He trained you well. You've got talent, and your instructor does too. Why doesn't that energetic boy over there try learning a bit from Leo? I was his first pupil! <laughs> you must adore him so much! How'd you know? He's our biggest Moe character. <laughs> okay, first I've heard of it. More importantly, why don't you all die? Wang Kuhn, you're leaning out too much. Remember what we learned? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. 
Okay, now this is the kind of fight that I'm looking forward to. I don't care if I'm gonna, you know, rank up the score and all that. Which one of the women could have imagined that they could be in a gunfight inside Primavera? None of them could have predicted that the same room that once held the captain's dance party would be filled with a hail of bullets. Well, even then we were an inch away from having all of Primavera blown up. This it is way too thrilling for a girl. Think I've had enough. Let's go, Maurice. This time it's our turn. Time for the grand opening of Primavera Reborn. I gotta say, seriously, these look so freaking cool. Damn, that's awesome! Oh boy. Okay, gotta get better at this. Gotta get better at this. Okay. Yeah, bitches! Okay! Oh my god, they're still going! Holy shit! As they covered Caleb through a vicious gunfight, Miguel's group ran into the elevator. Close the door, quickly! Once we get up to the top, we've got plenty of weapons. We'll settle this fight up there. Rose, Leo, and you. Uh. Wait, who's that guy again? He's Wayne. Try not to forget it. How dare you forget my name! There's no need. Leon, it'll be a pain if they get away. I'd like to finish this here. Don't overstretch yourself. If they take refuge on the sweet floor, then that'll minimize civilian casualties. One after another, Wayne's bullets left holes in the closing elevator door. However, in that same moment, the door closed and Caleb's elevator began to rise. We'll use the stairs. We'll be trapped like rats in the elevator. Oh, by the way, which is the sweet floor? It's supposed to be the 14th. Lucky us. Good thing this isn't the Empire State Hotel. Oh, thank God. Can you imagine going up that many stairs? Oh boy! Maurice, a man even Caleb would take his hat off to, was extremely talented as a commander in a gunfight. They, they threaded their way through the cover of chairs and tables, making good use of cover fire as they gradually cut the distance between themselves and the stage. As far as defending against an enemy with a limited angle of attack went, even the random shots by women unused to firearms had a significant effect. However, in a wide open space like the main hall, this was hardly had any effect at all. Richard and some of the women hit off to the side of the stage, grabbing the empty gun Cyrus's group threw and, and them and reloading. Oh! Ha <laughs> it broke me! And I broke a nail too! If you've got time to whine about that, keep on reloading! Cyrus, here's the next one. Fire at will. Wait, who the hell's will? Need to reload on this next one. Next, fuck. Looks like we've got to scramble in the hall in the kitchen to keep up with the party, eh? Haven't you filled up that big eater of Merrill's yet? Okay, sorry to keep you waiting. Ready to row our game? Merrill and I'll lay down in barrage. Stella, pin down that sniper Maurice hiding behind the counter. Got it. If the commander can't stick his face out to look, that should buy us enough time. Sorry to keep you waiting. It's showtime. All right. Here we go. Oh boy. This is by far one of them. This seems to be like one of the most fun kind of visual novels I think I've gotten to go through, just because of just how active it is. Even though this isn't really needed, I am legitimately having way too much fun with this. I think I'm half tempted to start laughing like the gale at this point. Woo! Get down! When that machine gun girl starts shooting, go around both! With a high pitched noise, an alcohol bottle on the shelf behind Maurice shattered. It was a bottle of exactly one head distance away from Maurice's head. Look! Realizing that he was being sniped at, Maurice hurriedly pulled his head back behind the counter. The counter was a long distance away from the stage. He had been confident that inaccurate machine guns and shotguns wouldn't be able to hit him from this distance. If I take aim to shoot, I can actually get pretty close. 
I could get hooked on this. Sniper! Damn it, what a brazen woman. Your opponent is me. Come on, don't be shy and show me your face. Rick, Jonathan, get your rifles out. There's a sniper hiding in the curtain stage right. Sure thing, boss. By the way, boss, which side is stage right? Oh, for God's sake, you dumbass. Oh, you brought some friends with you? You know, taking on several men at once is what I'm best at. What? Excuse me? <laughs> I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna let that... I'm just gonna let that slide there. Jeez! That kind of caught me off guard there. <laughs> Damn, Stella, you badass! I'm starting to get used to it. I've started to take up shooting in my private life. Damn it! It's no use! Grenades! But it's possible Mother Ma Madam Amanda will get... Hell if I can! Just use them! They're gonna use grenades. Don't let them throw them! How can we do that? Shoot anyone who looks like he's about to throw. Or catch one and throw it back. Take your pick. Obviously I'll go for the first chance. For some time, Meryl's fierce barrage and Stella's polished sniping were able to prevent the other side from acting. However, that was only for as long as they could keep firing. No matter how hard they tried, there would be a slight gap when they reloaded. When that happened, the other side would probably all throw grenades at once. On the other hand, Primavera had no useful options except overwhelming them with a the barrage. If they didn't do that, grenades would probably come flying at them from the guest seat right, seating right away. Oh boy. If you're gonna throw something at us, at least make it bundles of money, darn it. Where's my reload? Hurry up! Almost done, just a little bit longer! That little bit longer proved to be fatal. Behind the cover, the enemy took grenades out of their pockets. At that moment, Richard started throwing things at the guests seating from his position off the side of the stage. The next moment, the enemies all jumped at once and started to retreat like a tide. To the enemy, they probably looked like grenades. Smart thinking, dude. <laughs> Let her empty bottles. I hope they might mistake them for something else. Can <laughs> you have thrown some real ones? God damn it, Richard! Well, I considered doing so, but then I had some vision of our repair expenses. That's brother for you. Mayor, sorry to keep you waiting. I filled them up for you. I'm ready, Cyrus. They're gonna figure it out. Look closer, idiots! These are just empty bottles! They played us for fools, damn it! Damn right. Oh, but of course. Having a drink and going crazy is the whole point of this club. Let's go. Fire like mad for the finale! Empty all your bullets and keep them pinned down! And when I run out? Then we'll get a standing ovation with grenades piling up on the stage. Okay, let's go. Time for Primavera's finale. All right. Here we go! Okay, I'm gonna try to bring my A-game here. I say as I start picking the numbered cards instead of the better cards. Oh no you don't! Damn right, it's my turn, bitches! Boom! Oh god. Nope, 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 nope. Not happening! There we go! Give the key! That's more like it. Bitch, it's my turn! Lay on the rose. Best to go with those two. Okay. There we go! Boom! Uh, uh, shit! I'm out of bullets. Maurice, hiding behind the counter, had been listening to gunfire, waiting for a gap in the barrage. At that moment, a man rushed in from outside and whispered something rapidly to Maurice. Wh what? I see. So that's how it is. Back. 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 No need to waste time cornering them! We're retreating! 
Father Caleb's under attack at the Belton Plaza Hotel. This is a diversion. We've been had. We're rushing off there to support him. If the father's defeated, we're done for. And away they go. Holy shit. And I'm shaking. When Maurice gave the order to retreat, it was quickly spread among all his men. Disgusted, they fired a few more shots into the stage, then disappeared from the club like mist. Afterwards, all that remained was a pathetic club filled with gun smoke, the smell of burning, glass, and the carpet, and bullet holes all across the walls. They're running away. We... we won! We won! Nice going, everyone. You've earned my praise. This is what Primavera is capable of. The era of women sucking up to men is over. The women joined hands and jumped around happily. Cyrus, covered with sweat, sat down heavily on the stage. <coughs> I'm beat. And wasn't the plan for the police to round them all up? We did account for the possibility of them being withdrawn to support Caleb. The captain has their path blocked off. They won't be able to join forces with Caleb. Eventually, the police came pouring in. It was somewhat humorous to see them nervously holding their guns at the ready, even though the enemy had already retreated. Hey guys, kind of late. At any rate, let us get Amanda to a hospital. Fortunately, her wounds seemed to be light. Okay, good. If she, if she received immediate treatment at a hospital, her life probably wouldn't be any danger. So, now, my role is finally complete. Hold on. I still need to slap your face before I'm satisfied. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Before you head off to the hospital, apologize to Primavera and the girls. No. There is nothing to apologize for. What are you talking about, brother? All she did was help us during Madame Rose's absence. On the contrary, we should be grateful to her. If you hadn't played the villain, Primavera could have faced a much worse... worst case scenario. Hmm. If I'm to play the villain, then shouldn't I retire from the stage before anyone realizes that? Stella and Mara looked crooked to their necks, wondering what was going on. However, Richard already understood. For the considerable amount of time it took Rose to grow confident in her position as Madam Amanda had protected her. Amanda was carried out in a stretcher. Richard immediately started evaluating the damage throughout the club. Stella and Merrill were getting agitated about all the wounds they hadn't noticed, wondering aloud whether any would become scars. Oh, come on! Those are... those are just... Uh, eh. I wonder if Rose is alright. Oh? Ah, don't worry. She's got Leo and Wayne, the two strongest bodyguards with her. Caleb may have a few guards with him, but huh, they're no match for Leo's group. If the guys who are here manage to join up with them, that'd probably turn the tables. But we've taken measures to stop that. This is... a total victory for us. After saying that, Cyrus landed spread-eagled on his back on the stage. And then after saying he was going to sleep for a bit, he put his hat on his face and started snoring loudly. <laughs> I my. It seems we won't be able to avoid having a few more special holidays. The phone started ringing. It was probably the captain. He'd probably call to tell them that they'd round up the enemies who were trying to return to Caleb. Hello? This is Club Primavera. Bunk. Before hearing the name of the person on the other side, Richard heard a sound of something hitting something. It was Butler, slamming his forehead against the desk with the phone receiver in his hand. I'm so sorry. Captain, the police just arrived a short while ago. They didn't manage to capture Caleb's men, but thanks to you, Primavera is safe. Well, about that. So sorry. I don't understand. What do you mean, Captain? After an apologetic pause, Butler let out a yell that was almost a scream. I must have the order to block the main road! Fuck! Oh no! Apparently screw-ups came in packs. Or maybe Butler was just born under an unlucky star of clumsiness. What exactly do you mean? The number of the street to be blocked was passed down incorrectly. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So wait, where does that leave us? The elite troops who left Primavera and, heading, and are heading for Caleb will proceed unimpeded. Unless Rosa's group defeats Caleb and escapes the hotel before those troops arrive, this time they'll be the ones trapped like rats. Ooh, that's a bad. That is a severe bad. That is really bad! 8.07 p.m. There was a fierce exchange of gunfire across the elevator hall on the 14th floor of the Belton Plaza Hotel, the sweet Okay, no, we're getting right back into the thick of it. Okay, cool. Here we go! Ugh. My turn! Ugh. God, that was a close one. Ugh. Okay, this is kind of getting a little crazy. Okay. Fuck. I know all I have to do is hit the space bar, but I'm wanting to try. Miguel song, we're heading back. Okay, retreat. Like we'd let you get away. Look out, Wayne Coon! Thanks to Rose grabbing Wayne by the collar, he barely avoided being baptized in lead. In the corridor around the corner, a barricade had been set up, made out of furniture carried from one of the rooms. The enemy had probably decided that taking shelter in the hallway, where they had long line of sight, was better than a close-range battle in one of the rooms. Damn. Damn! Fucking Caleb's ready for a body. Shit. Okay. Apparently spinning the mouse in a circle is a great idea to do this. The heavily armed Caleb was fully prepared for them, waiting on the other side of the barricade. The terrifying storm of bullets left the wall covered with holes, sending pieces of wallpaper flying amidst the smoke. Sorry to keep you waiting. We're all ready to start with round two here. Damn him! Grabbing himself a monster of a gun like that! What's wrong, Leo Kuhn? I'm worried. Rose. You borrowed a master key from our man in the hotel, right? Yes, I have it. Go into that room and contact Primavera. Check to make sure that the police rounded those guys up. Understood. Oh my god, I think we're going to have to be beat out. What's wrong? I thought you came here to beat the crap out of me. You ready to turn with your, run with your tails between your legs already? What's going on? Something's felt off ever since they ran upstairs in the lobby. But seeing that barricade, I'm sure. Those guys are sure things will get better if they can just buy time. Like that'll help them. The captain's police have already rounded up their backup. If that's true, Caleb's group wouldn't be able to get in touch with the men they sent the Primavera. If they're sure the backup's coming, it means they've at least managed to contact them. We can't eliminate the possibility that some sort of mix-up stopped the police from doing their job. Rose was quickly able to confirm the suspicion over the phone. They learned about the police showing up late and failing to round up Caleb's men, and also about how they failed to block the road so that the enemy's elite forces were coming here. I told you we couldn't trust that perverted bastard! We've got no time. Do we pull back or do we go? If we aren't careful, we'll be the ones trapped like rats this time. Rose-san. If they pulled back, all their plans would go up in smoke. Probably wouldn't, there probably wouldn't be a second chance. However, if they went forward, Caleb's group would be waiting for them heavily armed. They couldn't avoid waging a cautious, time-consuming fight. However, they didn't have much time left. If you let them get away now, what will happen? Things will probably get bad. If we let Caleb get away, then we can't expect all the family's bosses to surrender. It'll probably lead to those bosses starting to take revenge against Primavera. You know, there's always the possibility that James's side might help us out. Possibly. It'll mean a war that doesn't end until we've destroyed them all. You mean the war's gonna get bogged down? We aren't a mafia yet. We're just seven heroic gunmen. It's possible for us to attack, but we can't defend anything. It'll be impossible to prevent a whole lot of deaths in Primavera. And we have to defeat him here. But if we stay here, we might lose our lives. 
and I'm having the time of my life! Hey, how long are you gonna be whispering to each other over there? If you plan to keep us waiting any longer, we'd better get room service to bring us some champagne, hadn't we? Damn. Being prepared to dirty your hands means being prepared to do something that might kill you. We've managed to corner Caleb Son this far. We cannot let him escape. We'll end things right here, right now. I may lose my life, but the Caleb family will be destroyed. And also, I believe everyone else is already prepared to inherit my ideals. Even if I die, I'm sure Richard Kuhn and Stella and Meryl will save our countrymen. Rose's resolve was firm. She was truly prepared to risk her life and continue the fight. And I like this much stronger Rose, which makes me happy that she got stronger. Wayne, what about you? Don't ask. You already know how I'd answer. Thank you, Wayne Kuhn. Guess that means it's time for me to leave this place to you. Huh? Hey, Leo! Where are you going? Are you actually planning to run for it? Leo, what are you... Of course not. It's only decent for an old man to let the young one shine. Oh no, don't. Leo-kun, don't tell me. Rose, Wayne. I'm glad I got the fight with you. This old time, I thought we foot soldiers were forced into a meaningless war. It was probably something all weary soldiers felt after a fierce war, whether they won or lost. Why had they been forced to suffer in the hell of killing and being killed? Now I know it wasn't all a waste. When I saw we were fighting for young people and willing to give up on the future, I was happy, thanks to you. Leo. Wayne, keep improving yourself. I'm sure you have what it takes to become the strongest man. Rose, see to it that your ideals become reality. You're the only one who can bring our homeland back to life. Leo. <clears throat> Leo got into the elevator, gave a final wing, and disappeared as the elevator moved down. Wayne didn't have a clue what was going on. However, Rose knew. The one who defeated Caleb couldn't be Leo the Wanderer. It had to be Rose, the one who would create a new family and become the new ruler of City 20. Oh my god, he's not gonna go up against all of them by himself, is he? That was the best way for Leo to help them. As the bullet-ridden elevator doors opened, Leo appeared in the first floor lobby. The lobby was still desolate in the aftermath of their last fierce gun battle. The employees and guests who had witnessed it were long gone, leaving the place empty. There are probably also guests who are spending the night. Guests who, thanks to the soundproof walls, hadn't even heard the gunfights, and who wouldn't know what had happened in their hotel until it was over. A few people from that group here were, trem were here trembling, shocked to see this desolate scene. Leo pointed his gun at the ceiling and fired off a quick shot, causing them to jump and run away in a panic. Sorry, we've got this hotel reserved for the day. Leo grinned, found a topple over chair, and dragged it to the center of the vast lobby. After sitting in it, he took out and lit a new cigarette, then calmly enjoyed the smoke. The sound of screeching tires approached. Several cars were parking in a jumble in front of the hotel. There were more than 10 cars. There'd probably be over 40 men jumping out of them. All of those were frontline elites commanded by Major Maurice Mononobe. Leo leaned back in his chair, crossed his legs, and waited patiently. Hurry, right, the fire's on the 14th floor! There's only three hostiles! Don't let them get away! Find them and kill them! What? <clears throat> what? What's going on here? One by one, the, male, the men fell into stunned silence at the sight of that man, waiting for them in the center of the gun-ravaged lobby. The lobby was so huge, but there was just this one man sitting there alone. 
Over 40 men from the front lines were cowed, unable to advance any further. So you're the legendary Leo Shishigami, huh? What are you doing there? What happened to Father Caleb? He's upstairs, having a little showdown with our boss. So, I can't let you get in the way. <laughs> what? The young are trying to inherit this heir from us old guys. Can't you give them just a bit more time? I don't really get what you're saying. It means we're using, your, we're using an old guy to take care of all the other old guys. Uh, are you an idiot? Are you crazy? Huh? I've got a whole platoon with me. What do you think you're gonna do? Unbelievably, this crazy man intended to hold back this many people all by himself. Maurice's elite scattered to both sides of the lobby, killing the sound of their footsteps and hiding behind cover, as they slowly surrounded Leo. Be on your guards. There's no way he's really alone. This could be an ambush. Keep an eye out for snipers. It was only natural. He looked so calm while up against as many opponents. Of course, he had a plan. Leo slowly rose to his feet and pulled out his gun. Maurice's men also pulled out their guns, but they couldn't focus all their attention on Leo. They were on the lookout for some unseen person who was surely planning to do something while Leo distracted them so they couldn't concentrate fully. Damn. That's a hell of a plan, Leo. Ready. Leo pointed the barrel of his gun at Maurice and pulled the trigger. The bullet scraped past Maurice's shoulder, leaving a burn on his suspenders. B bastard Against this many people? You really... Let's get started. Time for the dawn of a new age. Sh shoot! 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 He's insane! Shoot him dead! Fuck! Alright, let's go, Leo! May as well have one hell of a finale. All right. Right there. All right. He's a nimble bastard. He's hiding behind the fountain. No, he's already moved behind that sofa. Keep an eye on your flanks too. They have snipers at Primavera. We'll have him there too. We'll have him here too. They've got to have them. Over here. Take that. <laughs> you guys kind of suck at your job, just telling you. <laughs> oh my god, and this music is so good, too. Oh boy. Oh boy. My turn. All by himself, he couldn't have hoped to shoot down this many people. If he didn't have help, there was no way he could have been waiting for them so calmly while smoking. Maurice's men were so worried about traps and ambushes that they couldn't keep their minds off their backs. So they couldn't give 100% of their concentration to the gunfight with Leo. If they had been 40 stupid punks, Leo would probably have been full of holes in an instant. Actually, probably yeah. However, since they were 40 experienced, at least Leo had room to fight. Only Leo's daredevil aptitude made his unrealistic one against 40 fight possible. That bastard! Don't tell me! He's actually alone and trying to fight us all? <laughs> the enemy's alone! No tricks to worry about, so concentrate on him! Don't get sucked into his pace! Swing around both flanks and annihilate him! Ah, oh, so you finally believe me now. You're insane! You moron! You've got a screw loose in your brain! Now that they didn't have to worry about their backs, Maurice's men all rose from their cover and filled the air with a storm of lead. As Leo ran, a cloud of countless gun holes and splintered fragments followed him like a dragon. Hey, just say nay, kinda suck. Can't even take one guy down, really? However, as he was being chased, Leo's expression grew even more filled with life and he smiled boldly. Right now, I'm fighting. 
and have been given a chance to fight for the young and pave the way to the future. This time I won't get in the boat. I'll stick with you until the end. Rose, wait. Tear down the air of inflexible old men and open the way to a new... Oh! Back here again! Oh! Shit! This is actually becoming much, much harder. Oh! Okay. Alright. Don't even worry about trying to overshoot. Just go with three and hit the cards. Oh, did you forget about me? <laughs> even though Leo Kun's frantically trying to buy his type. Yeah. Rosan, don't be impatient. Let's think of something. Oh, they're having the blast. There was no way for just two people to make any headway against the heavy weapons set up by Caleb's group behind the barricade. However, they couldn't let the precious time Leo had given them go to waste. They had to think of something. They had to. You guys concentrate on your on our front. Yes, boss. Caleb, you've noticed, right? Our backup's taking too long. And I can't see Leo or Wayne anywhere either. Yeah. They might be planning to go around the outside wall and get behind us or something. Did we abandon this place, though? Let's open up a route of retreat. We should give up on our reinforcements. While Rose kept shooting to pin them down, Wayne used the master key to fish through the guest rooms and employee rooms. Then he found an extraordinary prize and came back. Did you find it? This is what Leo would do. He'd be able to get through this. You're better at shooting. I'll cover you, so please do it! Wayne let out all the breath in his lungs and concentrated. Leo would do this. Leo could do it. I can do it. The moment Rose started to give some fierce suppressive fire, Wayne leapt up from his cover. Then he threw a large bottle of alcohol with all his strength. The guards thought it was a grenade for an instant, but their superior physical reflexes quickly saw that it wasn't. Surely these people were planning to startle them and do something during that gap. Don't lose your concentration, the enemy's right in front of you. The arc of the bottle went over the heads of the guards of the barricade. Huh? What's that? Get, get down! Alright. Wayne's honed concentration was focused entirely on the bottle, and magnificently with a single shot he shattered the bottle of alcohol right over their heads. It had been a bottle of vodka with extremely high alcohol content. As the bottle shattered in midair, it violently scattered glass in all directions, even pouring burning alcohol down on them that had been ignited by the bullet. Wayne didn't waste that moment of confusion. Letting out a war cry, he dashed forward and leapt over the barricade. Then he became a bullet with the flexibility of a wild animal and charged into the guards. Go, Wayne! Fucking beat the shit out of him! Use the Leo card. Make it fitting. Oh. Oh, that's a close one. That was a close one. This is so fucking intense, I love it! <laughs> KO! Where's Caleb? Where's Miguel? They ran! Don't let them get away! Miguel's wild instincts had been spot on and he had immediately protected Caleb. If he hadn't, Caleb would probably have been torn apart by a random glass. At least, that's what had happened to Miguel. His whole body had been gouged by glass fragments and fresh blood was beginning to seep out. Are you okay, Miguel? Damn it, you're covered in blood! It isn't as bad as it looks. <laughs> Run away! Get out of this hotel! Hey, Miguel! Miguel! Stop right there! This place is your grave! Caleb's son! 
Damn, you're persistent, woman. Just like my dead wife. Oh, we are still doing this. Very well. Oh yeah! This is the kind of fight that I was looking forward to! Is he trying to Leo card? Fuck! Yikes. You bastards kinda suck at what you're doing. Leo wasn't without a plan. He had talked with their man instead of the ho inside the hotel and got him to spread the weapons Meiji had provided them with throughout the hotel. Smart! So, plenty of ammunition and weapons were hidden here and there throughout the floors. This lobby was no exception. Why? Why can't we finish off just one guy? How many of us have he, has he gotten? Why is he giving us so much trouble? He's got a demon inside him. It was an expression of Maurice's. When humans fall into an extreme tight spot, that's the moment they pour all their concentration and energy for living into the fight. What's up? At that moment, a target 100 meters away looks like it's right in front of them, and they can take aim as easily as spooking it with their finger. They can sprint without panting and defy gravity like their body is a feather. They can be aware of their surroundings without even looking and acting accordingly. Act accordingly. Act accordingly. Maurice knew he was in a mental state when a storm of enemy bullets phased him no more than leaves falling on still waters. Leo wasn't smiling throughout this gunfight because of his audacity. He had achieved a state of ultimate concentration which released his mind from all unnecessary details. A mental state that made this entire scene seem like a brat playing in a garden instead of a vast lobby. Just once in the past, Maurice had reached this level himself. Just once. He was prepared for death in the front lines. For him, there had been no trace of pleasure or exhalation. There was an overwhelming sense of despair and fear of death, like someone hanging by their fingernails from a cliff. Cliff? Even though this man had reached the same state, he was smiling. That moment, Leo's and Maurice's eyes met from the opposite side of the lobby. Rushing by the fountain, leading his way through potted plants and carts used by the porters, Leo focused on Marisa's eyes. Leo! I'm not losing to you. You can try all you want. I mean, hell, even if I... Oh, God, that was a fucking close one. Oh, God! Jeez! I don't want to rely on the space bar, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> Maurice's gun was knocked away, blown apart, and scattered. It was probably impossible for anyone but him to realize what had happened. At this impossible distance, he had aimed down the barrel of Maurice's gun, and even while weaving through all that cover, his bullet had gone straight down it. It would have been like putting in eye drops on the second floor, but even that huge distance was like touching someone right in front of him. The moment it hit, it tore off his fingernails, and Maurice held his bloody fingers, screaming. Kill that monster! You're kidding me! Like we never lose just one person! It was almost a scream of fear. Oh my god, this is a long one. At the sound of that voice, all the men hiding in the lobby rose at once, raising their guns at once, and fired at once. But Leo was probably counting the number of shots, fully aware of how many were worth dodging. Then, with a speed that must have seemed so fast to them, it was probably like a dreamlike underwater motion to Leo. He took two handguns and slowly, smoothly, and accurately aimed at two different foes. With a casual motion, as though merely poking them with the gun tips, the barrels focused with unparalleled accuracy. This very thing was probably a sign of his state of clearness and serenity. For Leo, time itself probably seemed to be painfully slow. Here we go. The instant Leo grinned, sluggish time shattered. Oh my god! Damn! Alright. There's 
still use my own card in this fight. You think I'm done? Fuck! Jeez! Definitely is the rose god! Accept it! I'll never accept that a monster like you exists! The fear of the battlefield was coming back to Maurice. The fear of the front lines, which he had to take drugs every night to forget. But when Leo saw that look on his face, he grinned and shrugged. How long do you plan to keep on warring? It's 47 already. This is where your war ends. Damn, Leo! Rose and Wayne were gradually closing in on Caleb and Miguel, unwilling to let them escape. Okay, I'm, I'm giving this the kind of Uminako tree run right here. Miguel must have been bleeding badly since occasional dots of blood made it easy to follow their trail. That blood trail disappeared inside the Sky Lounge. In there? It's got plenty of places to hide. A good place for an ambush. They wanted to scout the area out carefully, but that would give those two time to escape. So even though there might have been an ambush, Wayne had to jump in without hesitation. At that moment, with a splat at Wayne's feet, one new drop was added to the trail of blood. The instant Wayne pointed his gun at the ceiling, Miguel, who had been clinging to the ceiling and waiting for his prey, lunged at him. Fucking Miguel! <laughs> at the same moment he was held down, with the gun about to be pressed against his head, Wayne's body moved nimbly. He grabbed Miguel's arm, and the latter's gun was knocked away to go sliding across the counter. After showing his surprise for an instant, Miguel pulled out a knife and dashed forward. The two of them rolled around on the floor in a scuffle. You've improved a lot, Wayne! And so fast! Mock me. Mock me all you like for now. But I'm going to keep on growing. And then I'll entrust my host to Rosan, and pave the way to the future! Oh, really? Then let's see how far that takes you! Oh, boy. God! I don't care, I'm having way too much fun right now. Damn right I am! Bam! Damn, Wayne looks like a goddamn demon through that. I, it's no wonder he's called the Mad Dog. Rosan, find Caleb. This guy's trying to buy time. If you figured that out, I can't let you go past here. Hmm. Like you ever planned to let us past you. Oh my god. Ah! Oh my god, the music in this is so fucking good. Come on, you bastard! I'll use my own card against you. Oh, really? It's a shame they don't have me in a card. I'm sure it will be truly fabulous. I mean, to be fair, you're not wrong. Wayne-coon! Miguel's keen knife... Eh, knives... Ah. Miguel's keen knife edge cut into Wayne's body over and over. Of course, Wayne kept on defending himself by a hair's breadth. He kept avoiding a fatal wound. Even so, that didn't stop fresh blood from flying off Wayne's whole body every time Miguel swung his knife. Can't you have a single fight without me without relying on that? Mm, say whatever you like. You and Rose are gonna die here. But Rose noticed something. Wayne wasn't the only one covered in blood. Miguel was too. When he had protected Caleb, a large fragment of glass must have plunged deep into his skin. Each time he moved, blood poured out. All I need to do is make sure we finish each other off. Rose is no match for Caleb alone. Just die already! You really want us to kill each other? You have no fucking idea how my mind works, do you? Well, to be fair to you... Oh, I'm just asking out of curiosity. Fuck! Damn it! Damn it, I messed up that time. Oh, by the way, to answer your question, yes, even I don't know what's going on in my mind. 
That's a close one. Go! Oh, I'm not done yet! Come now, surely you can do better than that. I'm bleeding all around, for God's sake. Will you just shut up and fight? Oh God, I'm getting way into character. I'm getting way too into character now. Help! As the struggling pair fought over the knife, it turned into a test of strength to see who could get pointing at the other person. It was like watching a pair of souls in hell fighting over a single spider web. As they fought over the knife covered in blood and with wounds all over their body, it became a scene that would make many people, not just Rose, want to cover their eyes. This fight wouldn't end until a knife was plunged deep into one of their bodies. I won't let Caleb die. Even if we end up killing each other, I won't let you kill him! Don't take me lightly, bastard. I'd die for Rosan! Both of them were offering up their lives for the person they believed in. When devotees of an unideal face-off, they're all fighting for their own sense of justice. Neither will retreat. Until one of them achieved martyrdom, the killing would not end. Stop it, you two! Stop! I understand. I know that nothing I say can stop from killing each other. I'm the only one who can stop Wayne, but Caleb is the only one who can stop Miguel. I've got to find Caleb. I've got to make Caleb stop them. Rose started running, searching for a person in the empty Sky Lounge. Caleb had to be close. She knew his personality wouldn't let him use the time Miguel was buying to run away. Come out, Caleb's son! I know you're here! At this rate, one of the two of them will die! You're the only one who can stop him! So please show yourself! Rose's frantic voice echoed throughout the room. Behind her, the bloody fight to the death continued. You... bastard! <clears throat> I... will not lose! I will not lose! My war won't end. Even if you kill me, it can't end. You're insane. With that much blood lost, it was only natural for his mind to get hazy. However, Miguel's death struggle didn't weaken in the slightest. On the contrary, the tip of his knife gradually began to point towards Wayne. <laughs> bit by bit, the downward pointed tip of the blade buried itself in Wayne's thigh. A gush of blood poured out, staining Wayne's leg red. Wayne's face was twisted in pain. But at that moment, their bodies instantly switched places. <gasps> Using Leo's techniques, yes! Wayne had used the movements Leo had taught him to switch places with Miguel. In an instant, that balance between terrible forces broke and Miguel fell violently forward into the counter. Wayne also lost his balance and fell down hard. What happened to the knife? Wayne hadn't been able to steal it, but it wasn't in Miguel's hands either. <laughs> the knife was buried in Miguel's stomach. It may not have been all the way in, but it didn't seem to be a light wound. Miguel's body twisted, the knife fell out, and Wayne could see blood pouring out with a disgusting sound. It's over. I will not lose. I will not surrender. Yeah, I know. It's the same for both of us. <laughs> he must have been cut terribly deep inside his mouth, too. Miguel spat out a glob of blood. It was a serious wound that would have made most men lose the will to fight long ago. But Wayne understood. For Miguel, no, for both of us. It's impossible to accept defeat while we still live. But that ends it, Miguel. Slowly, Wayne pointed the barrel of his gun at Miguel. Miguel was just now starting to stagger to his feet. Don't, Wayne Coon! Uh, there's no need to shoot! There's no other way to end our fight! That's right. And 
until I lose this life of mine. I will not surrender. Miguel, this is the end. As he screamed, Miguel grabbed a machine gun, hid behind a pillar, and raised it. However, the barrel of Wayne's gun was already pointing at Miguel. Oh, fuck. We are still going. He can still find a way to make himself look good, even when there was clearly blood pillowing out of his damn stomach. God, this fight is absolutely insane. Ugh. KO. With a thunk, Miguel dropped his gun to the floor. The fingers that had held it were bent at odd angles. He might not have had enough strength left to even bear the weight of the gun. Though his eyes rolled and he seemed to be about to faint, he still didn't let his knees hit the ground. He bent over slowly, trying to pick up the gun. In that case, Wayne would have to pull the trigger one more time. He had to pull the trigger to perform the funeral rites for a man who could easily have died already. However, Wayne also seemed to have been hit by a bullet fired by Miguel. It had hit him in a better spot than Miguel, but it didn't change the fact that they were both covered in wounds. There stood two people who just wouldn't die. My wall look and Miguel. You're just like me. You fool! Stop it! You there, aren't you, Caleb son? Show yourself! And please, pin McGill Co Coon's war for him. With the barrel of his gun still pointed at Miguel's forehead, Wayne slowly pulled the trigger. <laughs> as soon as Miguel let out a war cry and tried to dash at Wayne, his body froze up as though struck by lightning. There was no thunder. Instead, a yell like thunder was what had pierced him. Caleb. Slowly, from the back of the store, Caleb appeared and spoke again. Enough, Private Kodashiki! Miguel's body was as stiff as a statue. As of this moment, I release you from your duties. Lay down your arms at once and suspend all combat activities. Hey, look. You are now permitted to return to your family and receive a chance at a healthy, productive life. You fought well, Kurashiki. You were brave. I give you permission to surrender. For a while, Miguel seemed to be dumbfounded. He may have been near unconscious due to blood loss, or he might have been wrapped up in some emotion. No one could tell which. However, at the end, he definitely whispered something. So now, my war is over. I... Wanted to die with Kayla. That cannot be permitted. You did well, Kurashiki. As of this moment, I hereby dissolve the Caleb family. That is all! Does that mean that there's a chance that we could, you know, help Miguel, maybe? Miguel's body slumped and slowly fell to the floor. It did not try to get up again. After seeing this, Wayne also slumped to his knees and fell over. Wayne Coon! Damn. And we're supposed to just be just getting started. Thank you, Wayne Coon. You can rest too now. Caleb San and I will settle the rest together. Gross. Wayne was still conscious, but he didn't seem capable of getting up on his knees. But even so, he refused to lose consciousness until Rose and Caleb finished settling things. Thank you, Caleb son. I knew you were a person worthy of respect. Miguel had told him to gun down the three of them with a the machine gun while he bought Caleb time. But Caleb couldn't do it. So... He had been unable to do anything except watch. Is that enough? Miguel's war may have ended. However, my war won't. No. I will end it. 
There's nowhere to run. No one to get in the way. Shall we duke it out, Rose? You should have done this from the beginning. Since the day you came to visit me at Primavera, if we could have done this, we probably wouldn't have brought misfortune to everyone. Maybe. If you'd had the balls to do it then, like you do now, I never would have needed to play the bad guy at all. Please forgive me. I will bear all of those sins. And so, I'll end your war too. <laughs> Perfect. You think you can really bear all I tried to bear? Then show me, Rose Hayabara. No. Madam Rose. Let's begin. Let's do this, Caleb. Well, let's do it right. Jesus! Even the music is all the music. The music is just somewhat fitting now. Uh, uh, not bad, Rose! I may have mocked the idea of you shooting with those thin arms, but you aren't half bad! He threw away the now empty machine gun and pulled out a handgun. Thank you. Right now, I'm grateful to you. If only you'd reached this spot before I did. That's the unforgivable sin I've committed against you. Thank you so much. And sorry. In the future, please watch over me and guide me. I am Madame Rose. Starting today, I sit at the top of the City 23 Underworld. <laughs> well said. Glad to hear you can, you, you can say that. Alright. Jesus! <laughs> I will inherit your ideals and your sins. Ugh. Thank you. Sounds like now I'll finally be able to find peace. Now, I'll end your war. End it. You can do it. Goodbye, Caleb. Friday, October 20th, 1947. 8.29 p.m. Exactly two hours after Caleb appeared at the Belton Plaza Hotel, the curtain finally fell on this night of roses and guns. When's the rose gun day? The police showed up too late at the Belton Plaza Hotel, and they arrived after being sent running about by bad information. What they saw was a destroyed lobby, a large number of men lying on the floor, and in the center of that lobby, with a strange sense of magnificence about it, was a single empty chair. A car raced through the nighttime city. It passed by several emergency vehicles with flashing red lights. Rose was holding the steering wheel. In the passenger seat, a worn out Leo finally lit a cigarette he'd been holding in his mouth for some time. In the rear seat, Wayne, who should have been nearly dead, was lying down with a huge smile on his face. Were you able to talk with Caleb? Yeah. At the end, he entrusted me with his ideals. That's great. So, the weight's finally gone from his shoulders, too. I believe he was able to find peace. I think Miguel was, too. I can't understand all of his craziness, but... Caleb's words were probably enough to lift all that from his shoulders. I wonder if I could do that, too. Just like Caleb's son. Could I say words that would require reward the people who are so close to me if they risk their very lives? You could. I know you could, Rosan. Wayne Coon, 
Thanks so much for what you did today. I'll never forget what I owe you for this day. When we get back to the club, I'd better reward you a lot. Oh, son, your words are too good for me. Either the strings of tension holding him up had snapped, or else those words of congratulation helped him drift off. Wayne fell down asleep and started snoring. Leo and Rose giggled. Damn. Eventually, they could see Primavera and the emergency vehicles crowded around it. Hey! They could see Stella and Meryl and the other girls noticed them and started jumping and waving. Damn, Leo! Thereafter, this became known as the nighttime of incident of roses and guns. The one who named it so had been deeply involved in both sides of the fight, a man named Maurice Mononobe. Not just him, but all those involved in this incident spoke about what happened that night. The legend of the seven men and women led by Madame Rose, who defeated the tyrant father Caleb, ruler of the Caleb family in a single night. In particular, the legend of Leo Shishigami, the man who held back dozens of men alone in the Belton Plaza hotel lobby, lasted for a long time in say 23. However, astoundingly little was ever written about this in the records of public institutions and the press. It was rumored that the GHQ had clamped down on any information, preferring that disagreeable points such as rebellion and insurrection be kept quiet. So, this incident only was only recorded by those residents of the world of the night who knew about it. Even so, the story of this long October 20th night was passed down for a long time. Good. Father Caleb disappeared from City 23 on the road. At the same time, Madame Rose announced the creation of the Primavera family and Club Primavera. Word spread far and wide that the City 23 underworld had a new conqueror. Starting with James Tomotaki, the majority of the Caleb family's powerful bosses joined the new family. They agreed to form a new family underneath Madame Rose's rule. This peaceful, harmonious re reorganization was, of course, thanks to Richard's efforts behind the scenes. The criminal underworld can't be governed with bullets alone. It was only after his adjustments that the nighttime gunfight had meaning. Jeez. Uh, I guess it makes sense that Miguel died, along with Caleb. It's gonna sound weird, but I think I'm gonna miss them a lot. Primavera was playing host to even more people than that legendary dance party. Hey, Tomotaki! Hey, Butler! Is Meiju here too? Of course he is! It was filled with the chattering voices of the main bosses, starting with James Tomotake, who had become the core of the new family, as well as officers from the occupying forces, heavy hitters from Chinatown, and businessmen of their own nationality, who wanted to be the first to offer their support. Of course, the lovely leading members of the Primavera League Alliance were also gathered there, making for a much brighter scene than you'd expect from an underworld conference. In the center of all this, Rose walked up to a podium. There are several accounts describing the heavy applauded speech Madame Rose gave that day. If all the people in the world could love their neighbors, the world would surely be filled with benevolence. If all the people in the world refused to balk at talk taking on unpleasant jobs for their neighbors, surely the world could never be filled with evil. With turning this dream into reality as our guiding principle, we announced the establishment of an organization for cooperation and mutual aid between our countrymen. Also, I think I suddenly got carpal tunnel in my, in my hand. Oh god, ow! Fuck! I just noticed the pain. I was so focused on the fighting, I just noticed it. To save our countrymen, we must take the initiative and work hard, dirtying our hands, so that none of our countrymen have to get their hands dirty. Oh, oh I guess it is Rose talking, right. In this dark era, I never got involved in anything that wasn't linked to satisfying my own self-interest. But then, for the first time, I felt as though I'd done something to help another person. This is what- oh, this is what James Tomotake reflected upon in his writings about the Primavera family establishment ceremony. Oh. Bomb called Caleb was gone, and the occupying forces in Chinatown, along with the major powers in other cities, celebrated the birth of the Primavera family. At today's ceremony, many people had shown up. Not only made you of the Golden Dragon Society, but also from the, the also the Ba Xing Bang from City 8, the Castiglione family from City 7, and high-ranking members of the Satomi Alliance in Chiba. 
everyone welcomed Rose's speech with applause and gaze of admiration. Of course, it was all for show. They were planning to eat into City 23 at Primavera showing in weeks. They were only congratulating Primavera now because they looked down on them as being an easier opponent than Caleb. Would this new force be convenient or inconvenient for their, own, for their interests? Until they could tell, they would probably continue to congratulate them on the outside. After that, the death match for the underworld where the interests of the powers from all cities collide would begin. Because people are like that. Rose Chan! Rose Chan! That was a wonderful speech! And gave me the shivers. Thank you so much, Captain. Uh, putting that aside, what is it? You said you had you had something important to discuss confidentially. I apologize for being com so completely useless the other day. As a man, I can't bear to be branded as useless for long. <laughs> That's not true at all. Well, first, hear what I have to say. The truth is, a certain person has come to Japan. And regarding that, I've been pulling a few strings. Strings? Yep. I can't tell you the details, but would you mind listening to what I have to say? It's something that'll definitely benefit you. N no, the reborn Primavera family. Won't you let me use this to make up for my recent blunders? Unsure what he was talking about, Rose stared at him blankly. However, she had a vague idea. During her speech, she had seen Butler showing a, f a few suited Americans around. Since they weren't in military uniform, they must be civilians. However, judging by his treatment of them, it was clear that they were somehow higher in rank than him. Rose hadn't recognized it, any of them. When Butler nodded to his aide, an old, stout American appeared from the corridor. The quality of the suits on his bodyguards were a clear sign of his status. Sir, this is Madame Rose. Welcome to Primavera, sir. I'm Rose Hayabara. A pleasure to meet you, Madame Rose. I heard your speech. I found it truly magnificent. Thank you very much, sir. I'm honored by your words. Ah, oh, your English is splendid. I can see that you were raised well. Rose Chan, do you remember the Peter McDowell incident? Yes, I remember. So, this man is... Mr. McDowell, the lieutenant's grandfather. Or should I introduce him as Don McDowell of the McDowell family? He was the Don of a powerful and well-known family on the east coast of America. Oh! She remembered well from the incident with the lieutenant that he had enough influence to scare the top officers in the State 23 occupying forces. Well, I don't want to mislead you, madam. I came to Japan for purely personal reasons. I'm not here as the dawn of the family. I made special arrangements for this trip so I could meet the woman who protected the honor of my grandson and his future wife. I thank you for what you've done, madam. Oh! It just clicked to me! But thanks to you, my grandson did not have to end up as a shameful man who abandoned his fiancée. You have protected the honor of my family. I never forget a favor done for my family. Thank you very much, Mr. McDowell. Uh, however, let me say this for the sake of Lieutenant McDowell's honor. He certainly wasn't a dishonorable or shameful man. He fought bravely until the end for the sake of his future wife. All I did was help settle the debt that stood in the way of their love. Ugh, I've never been so rude as to ignore a favor done for my family. I've wanted nothing more than to return the favor. In the meantime, this Captain Butler here has let me in on a very intriguing story. Butler grinned and winked. I hear you seek the special offers window for public projects involving the City 23 in the Tokyo metropolis. It is a strange coincidence, but it just so happens that my family owns a portion of that window. If you'd be willing to become friends with me, I'm prepared to seriously look into the proposition of lending that privilege to you. It should be possible to trade the special offers windows owned by other families for the ones we possess in other cities. If we gather those together, you should be able to control most of the ones for C23. That's an extremely generous offer. Rose couldn't help but be astounded at this sudden offer she hadn't even wished for. Something that Caleb had wanted so much and gone to such lengths to obtain. Of course, an offer this wonderful hadn't just popped out of nowhere. Butler had set it all up. 
To the higher ranked members of the State 23 occupying forces, the 50 million they had cheated out of Caleb was dirty pocket change. They couldn't afford to let it grow into a scandal. Butler, realizing he might easily be used as a scapegoat, had quietly sold this information to McDowell. As a result, Don McDowell had gotten his hands on half of those 50 million. Damn. On top of that, he had made a proposal regarding the deal for that special offer's window. Butler had explained the data showing that, while the amount of Tokyo restoration money was still on the rise, it would shrink rapidly over the next few years. In a decade, there wouldn't be any left at all. In that case, it was best to sell off the special offers window before their value suddenly dropped. On top of that, Madame Rose was interested in obtaining the special offers window and was in possession of a significant amount of cash. Right now, it should still be possible to sell them off at a high price. On top of this, this would settle the debt from the lieutenant incident, killing two birds with one stone. That was how Butler sold it. There was no way someone of a family Don's stature would come all the way out to this remote country just to thank someone who helped his grandson. In other words, it was one of those backroom deals that were Butler's specialty. What you said in your speech was true. People ought to save their family first and their neighbors second. As sad as it may be, humans have a desire to take their neighbor's wealth and push their troubles onto their neighbors. If we could only be freed from that, putting our neighbors who are our comrades and countrymen first, not only would humanity be freed from the irrationalities of poverty and equality, but we should be able to build a magnificent, prosperous human society that respects each other's cultures. I pray that you become the embodiment of that dream in this far eastern country. Don McDowell? Madam Rose, I'm sure that we will become good friends. Don McDowell rose to his feet and stuck out his hand. Madam Rose also stood up and the two wordlessly shook hands. Cool! We got the Don. Well, you know, we got the Don on our side. I need to end it here because my throat is... <laughs> I can't, I'm sure you can tell, but my throat is fucking killing me. Also, I just realized I've been recording for over two hours now. Okay, we definitely gave this the Umineko treatment, and I hope you guys liked the extra long episode. That felt like a really, really satisfying conclusion to Caleb's arc, especially with Miguel, too. Okay, so, thoughts on that. I admit, I... Was, I was pretty much harping and hating on Caleb and Miguel a bit too much. But, I came to understand them a bit more. I may not like them entirely as people, but as characters, I find them both actually pretty well written, and I liked them. I liked their story. Now I'm kind of worried about what the hell else I'm going to be seeing. So, if you guys like this extra length video, be sure to let me know down in the comments down below. Also, again, I apologize for me getting in. Ooh, I, I was in the zone. I was getting way into the character. I was becoming Miguel. That's probably not a good thing. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to go try to watch a bunch of videos of puppies and kittens and get the psychotic thoughts out of my brain. And then I'm going to go kiss them. Okay, I'm out. Bye. Hello there everybody, Sabatonai2 here, and if you like this video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And hey, if you guys like my content, then maybe you'd like to check out another channel who I think deserves equal attention. So click that nightmare emblem and check out that channel, or go to the links in the description down below. Once again, thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.